Are you planning on shutting off the heat to your home or cottage this winter? Well, keep watching and I'll show you how to winterize your water softener so it doesn't burst. Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, Island Water East Store and the Water Store in Midland. On my YouTube channel here, you see lots of uh, videos about water treatment equipment, how to install, how to maintain, how they work, reviews, etc. That way you can make some great decisions about water treatment for your family. If this is your first visit to my channel, welcome. You may want to consider clicking the subscribe button at the bottom right hand corner of the screen. That'll take you right to my YouTube channel. There's lots of videos there, lots of great information for you and your family. I'd also really encourage you to watch this video right to the end because I'll have a link to my water softener playlist. Again, tons of videos there, lots of information for water softeners to help you make some great choices. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. So next you're going to put the water softener into regeneration mode. So you're going to push the regen button, you're going to hold it down to five seconds until you hear the unit start up. And what that's going to do is going to start backwashing. You'll see a rush of water, or hear a rush of water uh, flowing to drain through the drain line here. And uh, it's going to start counting down. Once it uh, starts counting down, it's released all the pressure inside the water softener is going to drain. So that's the point where you're going to want to uh, a bypass the water softener. So just click the bypass valves on this clack water softener. The two pointy ends of the bypass valve need to, to face each other and that puts it into a backwash. So then what you're going to want to do is put the water softener back into the home position and to do that you're just going to have to fast forward through each of the cycles. So once it starts to count down from each of the cycles you can push the regen button again to start moving it along to the next cycle. And then to the next one, and we want to get all the way to the home position, which on a clock water softener shows the current time. And one more. It's just coming up to the fill cycle, and then it's going to be at home once it's showing the current time. And it's counting down and it's going to take it to home. All right, once it gets into the home position, then what you're going to want to do is you're going to get a, a small bucket because now we're going to be disconnecting the, uh, the water lines from the water softener to get ready to uh, drain it. So um, the first thing you're going to want to do is the drain line. So again, you'd have a small bucket handy here and then you'd pull out this ring here, this clip, and then lift up the drain line. As soon as you do that, water's gonna come pouring out of here. So make sure, like I say, you, that you have a bucket uh, handy for that. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is you wanna disconnect the water softer from the bypass. Now, often you can just do that because these are just hand tight, but if they, you might need a wrench or something like that to unscrew it. So basically you just unscrew that, the bypass from the water softener. And then once you've got it loose, then you can just move the uh, water softener away from the bypass and the plumbing connection. There it is, it's off, as you can see. And then that makes it accessible to move on to the next step. There's a couple ways that you can drain it. So the first way is that you could just lean it over and drain it into a bucket. Now this will be quite messy and uh, it's quite inefficient. In fact, you may have to lean it over so far that you actually have the base higher than this end to be able to drain out all the water. An easier way to do it, but requires you putting together a couple of fittings, is something like uh, what I've done here. So I'm uh, using these fittings here. So now you have to be careful which is the line in and which is the line out, but then this would connect to a compressor. So this would go in this side, and you tighten it up. So you'd actually use uh, the, the tail kits that uh, are come with these uh, water softeners as the connection points. And you'd have to, like I say, cobble this whole thing together. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. And then we have another fitting on the other side here. And I have it connected at the bottom here. I don't know if you can see it or not here. I have it connected here so that uh, you can put a hose on here and then run it into a bucket or if you've got a sump hole nearby and uh, and then you'd like hook up the compressor to this side, you'd push out uh, the water, it would, it would flow out, and then once you have air coming out, then you know you've got all the water out of the uh, water softener. You can put this together in a number of different configurations. This is just uh, what I did with some spare parts laying around. But you use the clack brass uh, sweat assembly, and again, if you're using a different, if you're winterizing a different kind of water softener than a clack, you would just use whatever um, 
uh, assembly is used to connect the water softener to the plumbing here and then you just use uh, some straight pipe you can either use copper or PEX as you see that I've done here and then on this end here you just convert this for a uh, compressor so you can hook up a compressor to the inlet and then this end here I've just got a, a connection for a garden hose so you can connect a garden hose to this so this would be on the inside this would be on the outside from the valve hook up a compressor push out all the water Next, you're going to need to open up the injector port to make sure you get all the water out of here. Sometimes these are just hand tight and you can just unscrew them. Sometimes you have to use a, a wrench or a pair of pliers to get it out. So you can see there's a little bit of standing water in here. And uh, so what you would do is uh, you'd use a, you know, a paper towel or a microfiber towel or something like that. Anything like that to dry up the water that's in here. You just have to get most of it out so the water doesn't expand in here and, and crack the cap. And uh, then you put that back on. And as I mentioned, uh, hand tighter slightly more is fine. And then this is the, the connection to the brine line. So you would again remove the clip, slides out like that, and the brine line, and you just empty it into the brine tank. So speaking about the brine tank, ideally you'd like to time it so the salt level is fairly low. So you want to make sure that the salt level is quite low and that there's absolutely no water above that salt level. So if there is, you just scoop out the excess water. The water that's uh, below the top of the salt will be so saturated with salt, it's not going to freeze anyway, and uh, that part of it will be just fine. So then over the winter, you'd want to uh, <clears throat> place it horizontally on the floor with the, the open ends of the valve sticking out uh, to the side. And then I usually stuff a rag into the holes, the inlet and the outlet holes, just to keep the wildlife out. Then in the spring, you're going to want to put it all back together. So you would reconnect the bypass to the valve. And again, you can just make these hand tight, but tight. And then the clip has to go back in for the brine line. And the drain line has to go be reconnected. And uh, whatever you do, make sure you put the clips in. That's uh, very important. And then you can look at uh, putting it back into service. So then you want to go to a high flow faucet, something like a laundry sink or a bathtub, something like that. Open up the faucet and let the water run. You're going to get some air bursts coming out of there, some splashing of the water, etc. Once it, it, the water flows consistently without any air in it, then you're done. So now what you want to do is you want to regenerate your water softener. So you can either click the regen button once and that'll schedule a regeneration for whatever time it's set for, typically 2 a.m. Or you can push the button, hold it down for six seconds and do a regeneration right now. And that's it. If you like what you saw today, please consider clicking the subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. For some more information, you can go to our websites, either watereastore.com or waterstoremidland.com. And that playlist I was talking about earlier on for uh, water softeners, if you click the right hand corner of your screen right now, you'll see a link that'll take you right to that playlist. Lots of information, make some great decisions about water treatment for your family. And that's it, Gary the Water Guy, thanks for watching.